very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. Right now it is somewhat late. We're getting closer to the time of very early. And here we come together into this church. From the time on this day when the sun dipped below the horizon, when there was no more light from that one star, from that time until now, what an amazing gift that we have been hearing our God speaking to you and to me. What a gift it is to have ears to hear our God speaking his word to you and to me. For this reflection here, you know, part of me would just like to simply go back and to replay the last hour. We have been hearing our God speak to each and every one of us. His own word. That would be one option. (laughs) For the homily, just go back and repeat what we've heard for the last hour. Another option I was thinking, perhaps her nerves have settled a bit more, but I didn't see any nerves and hear any nerves. To hear that exalted song, the song of what our God has done for you and for me, What a gift it is to hear that. To let what our God has done for you and for me, to let that be sung and to hear it. To hear his most holy word. I didn't plan to say any of this. (laughs) But sitting there, hearing God's holy word, hearing sung what he has done, I hear one thing. It's repeated again and again and again. It's our God. And he says, I love you. I love you. I love you. Do you realize I love you? I love you. I love you. I love you. I don't know about you, but who wouldn't want to spend an entire night awake hearing that? I love you. I love you. I love you. come to this gospel here, we hear, on entering the tomb, they were utterly amazed. 
Then the young man says to them, Behold the place where they laid him. He is not here. He's not here. Our God, if we get one thing from this most holy and wonderful evening, our God has a plan, and it is the plan of love. How good is our God and how good his plan. On the part of God, when it comes to his plan of loving you and me and accomplishing that plan, there is no defeat. There's no defeat. How wonderful, truly awesome our God who cannot be defeated. Now, for our part, you and me, (laughs) we have done just about everything we could to defeat the plan of our God. Time and time again, we, as a human family, have pushed against God's plan, preferring our own way. Even to today, from the beginning, preferring our own way, breaking covenant after covenant after covenant, choosing disobedience. Yet he, our God, awesome in power, even more awesome in love, is never outdone. It's never defeated. Defeat is foreign to our God. God has a plan, and that plan of love, his plan can never be outdone, no matter what we could do to try to undo his plan. No matter how bad it gets. During Mass, we pray, Indeed, though once we were lost and could not approach you, speaking to our God, you loved us with the greatest love. How awesome our God, so awesome We can actually say, actually sing, and we heard it sung. O necessary sin of Adam, O happy fault. Happy? How could this be? How could sin become our blessing? It's not because of the fault. It's not happy because of what we have done, but because of how awesome our God and how truly wonderful his power. It's what he does from nothing. We heard in that first reading in the beginning, from nothing he creates, from our sin, our brokenness, he recreates. God, rich in mercy, from the world's beginning has been ceaselessly at work for you and for me. That we, a fallen race, could become holy. No real hope. I bring this up, heard it said, for a Christian, looking at our world, looking at ourselves, looking at others around us, we are not optimistic. We're not to be optimistic. It's becoming clearer and clearer. This world is not something to be optimistic about. Others are not to be optimistic about. But we are called to be filled with hope. Filled with hope. 
There's no greater joy in this fallen world to be filled with the hope of our God, who cannot be defeated. That the darkness of sin, fallen humanity, could not be overcome by the true light of Christ. How good our God. When we, though through disobedience, we lost friendship with God, he did not abandon us. Our God has a plan. He accomplishes it. And how good that is. Well, the world suffocates us. This is the thing of we're not to be optimistic of the world because it suffocates us. Worse news after worse news after worse news. That's the world. It's been like that since the time of that fall. While the world suffocates us, our God, who is all good, deserving of all our love, he delivers to us his very son, the light of the world. This is what is proclaimed, sung throughout the entire world this night. That our God for us accomplishes his plan, our salvation. And how? Into the conclusion here. Perhaps we should have just gone over those readings again. (laughs) Sung the exalted. How does he accomplish this? How does he get it done? The mystery of his divine will? By giving us his son, his beloved, the only begotten. And what a mystery it is. That God's son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death. We hear prayed, whereby dying he destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. For by his cross and resurrection, he has set us free. Again and again, our God saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. For this, for me, me, in my heart, or like, it just burns. I want to live every day of my life proclaiming this. I want to die my dying breath praying this. How good is our God? Jesus, thank you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, save me. Jesus, I love you. I trust you. God, you are so good. So deserving. I love you. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set me free. 